All right. So I have been working on the information that's going in this video for a while now, but I feel like I have got all of the tips, all of the tricks, all of the information, all of the explanation, all of the things that you need to know about every single step of the current Delta Airlines flight attendant interview process. So I'm excited to finally share it with you. If you have seen some of my other videos, I have some other Delta videos. They are full of company information, um, information that you need to know about Delta so that you can um, communicate why you want to be a part of Delta. But this video specifically is about the literal process moving through the interview process. Um, they updated it. They updated Delta, updated the interview process recently when they came out with the latest job opening in June 20. 22 and they added another step so we're actually going to go through the whole process all right here let's i'm going to share the screen so we can look at it because here is the coolest part the entire process is on their website so delta airlines has let's see what if we changed it to look different does that look better that probably looks better so the whole process is on their website if you go i'll i'll put the link down below um how i got to this page because this page is not a super secret page. But what I'm going to give you is an explanation for each step and then also tips and um, strategies that I have developed based on feedback that I've gotten gotten from my coaching cl clients who have gone through the interview process. So just to make sure we're clear, I don't work for Delta. I have never worked for Delta Airlines, but I do own a company called Flight Attendant Career Connection, and I help aspiring flight attendants reach their flight attendant goal faster and with less frustration. And I work with a lot of people who are interviewing for Delta because, ah, oh, Delta, iconic. I mean, what? I mean, Delta. Delta is Delta. I'm even wearing my passport, passport plum blouse today in honor of this Delta video. So Delta is just iconic. But let's go through the interview process. Um, first step flight attendant application. Pretty straightforward. So you will need a resume to apply with Delta. Uh, a couple years ago, they actually dropped the resume requirement, which was weird. But um, right now, when you go and apply, you will need your a copy of your resume to apply so that you can upload it into the system. So here are the details. You need to have a passport in your possession that has at least 28 months on it. Of um, So if you are right now, if you've got a passport that's going to expire within the next uh, two and a half years or so, go ahead and start working on getting it renewed. Also, you have to be 21 years old, but they keep doing this thing with the application where like the application opened in June and they and the requirement on the application says you have to turn 21 by August 1st. So go if you're 20 and you're kind of like creeping up on 21, go look at the application and see um, because they're giving like a little bit of leeway. So it looks like almost like they want you to be 21 when you're a flight attendant for them, but they're giving a little leeway because the process can be uh, pretty intense in a couple months long. In fact, right now, so it's like mid-August when I'm recording this, um, they are kind of in a bit of a backlog as far as running candidates through the interview process. So they're still working fast and furious. They're still filling up training classes. They're still hiring like crazy, but they're, they, they were kind of moving people through really quickly. And now... Um, candidates who received an invitation for the video interview, they then received an a email that said, yo, we need to slow it down a little bit. We're sorry. It's just taking a long time. Stand by. We'll get to you. Thank you for your interest kind of thing. And so it looks like now uh, they used to schedule the video interviews pretty quickly, like within a few days or a week of getting that invitation. And now they're going like three weeks out. So just, just like a heads up. Um, and that really goes to show that it kind of depends on like where you are in the application like where you are, uh, like if you were at the beginning, if you applied early in the application, and then as you kind of get towards the middle and the end, the process can take longer. It doesn't always take a long time, but um, it can take some time, a couple months. So application, those are the, those are the few things that I think are important to note about the application. After the application, and it's just very straightforward, so I'm not going to talk about it that much. 
Now let's get into the part that we need to talk about. Next step, talent assessment. So Delta does an assessment. There's there's several airlines that do this like personality type assessment. Um, it's not uncommon. I do have a video on how to prepare for the assessment, how to do well in the assessment. Um, and I'll put the I'll put the link to that video below. But Delta's talent assessment is a little bit different because instead of it just being like a personality assessment, it is a talent assessment. So it is assessing your talents. Now we all have talents. Would you agree? We are all talented at some at something. Um, you know what? Like over the summer, my 10 year old came home and he was like, this guy came into our camp today and he could wiggle his ears. And guess what, mom? I can wiggle my ears, too. So, you know, we all have talents. We all have something that we could do. So the thing that gets to be a little bit confusing about this talent assessment is because once you do the assessment, they will email you the results, which is really great. And it has your three strengths, your top three talents that you are good at. Now, here's the thing about talents. They're all positive right? So like whatever you get is going to look positive because it is positive because it's your talent. It's your thing you're good at. Top three things you're good at. But even though you get one that says three good things, really good one, really good two, really good three, you still might get a thanks, but no thanks after that. And I've had people emailing me with screenshots of their talent card being like, but this is good. And I agree. It is good. All of your assessment results are good, but it doesn't when you're getting your uh, TBNT after the talent assessment, it means you're not hitting the personality guidelines that they think they want for their flight attendants. So your talents are not lining up with the talents that they want their flight attendants to have. OK, so that being said, what are they looking for? Um, things like collaboration, teamwork. Um, going above and beyond. They want people who are rule followers. They don't want people who are upsetting the apple cart. They want people who are going along, doing their best, staying positive, thinking about their core values. Servant leadership. Servant leadership is not like, uh, you know, I can't think of some of the ones that are really like hard terms, you know, like uh, manager or something like that, or even leadership. They put the servant in front of it because they want you to be more of a caregiver in your leadership style, not as much of an authoritarian, author, authoritarian, author, author, I don't know. They don't want you to be an authority in your leadership. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know what word that is, but if, if that kind of makes sense. So thinking about Delta and thinking about a Delta flight attendant, we always tell the truth on assessments. Assessments are designed to make sure that you're not masking, which is a fancy word for trying to manipulate the test. So you do want to make sure that you're being honest, but you also want to embody your, your Delta flight attendant self. So like, you know, there's several, all of us have several different sides to us and several different um, personalities that we put out based on the situation that we're in. Like I'm a different person with my husband, with y'all on the internet, uh, with my kids, with my parents. I'm different. I'm much more of an authority figure to my children than I am to my friends. But that doesn't mean one is me and one is not me, right? So we want to be embodying our Delta flight attendant for the assessment. All right, next, virtual job tryout. This one is, ba is, is bad new brand new and really good. <laughs> Nothing bad. This one is brand new for this current hiring. Um, it's new to the hiring process. So these other things we've seen for, for years, applications and talent assessments, but this virtual job tryout. So I actually, um, when Delta opens their application or they're going to open their application, there's someone in the human resources department that is my contact, my point of contact at Delta. And she's super sweet to always like email me and she'll make sure that like I know what's changed and like who's eligible to interview or hire, uh, apply and who's not. And um, so we're connected on LinkedIn too. And on LinkedIn, the celebration that that Delta recruiting team was putting out there on the LinkedIn's when this virtual job tryout launched was really cool. And I think that this is important to remember that when you're going through the interview process and they're adding these different layers, like people are working really hard on it and they're doing it because they want you to have the best opportunity that you can to show them 
why you would be a good fit. So this is another way you get to show why you would be a great Delta flight attendant. So it's not the same as, so don't look at it like, oh my gosh, it's another step I have to go through. And I just thought that looking at it from their point of view and how proud they were that they had given this tool to applicants, which is how they were phrasing it, is really important, especially when you go to the face-to-face and you start talking to the employees and you know when you are grateful for all the opportunities that you've had during the interview process it could probably go a lot way a long way so anyways virtual drop trial this is not a video interview you don't have to be dressed to impress um it is not a video it is electronic it is on the internet but it's not it's another assessment okay it's another assessment there's a ton of confusion at first about like do I need to be dressed up for my job tryout? And you don't. Um, so what is it? It is some scenarios. It is some audio to be listening to and remembering. Um, it is some situations you maybe find yourself in. This is going on. That's going on. This is going on. What would you do? Oh, yeah. What did that lady ask for three questions ago? Do you remember? That kind of stuff. Okay. So what do we need to keep in mind? Safety first. Safety first. If it's a safety situation, we keep people safe. We follow the rules and we act in integrity. We never lie. We never lie. And we do our best to provide those memorable, um, those memorable experiences and elevated customer service. That's what you want to keep in mind for the virtual job tryout. After that, after that, once you're successful, which I know you will be, um, after that, then you go to the virtual interview. So this is the video interview. Uh, they've been doing this live video interview again for years. This is this is a very similar to what they had been doing uh, for a while now. It's not on demand, pre-recorded. It is live, so it is more like a Zoom call. You will have a recruiter on the other end of the line, and she will he or she will be asking you questions. Their recruiters, for the most part, who the people who are doing the interviewing are flight attendants on special assignment. Keep that in mind. You're being interviewed by a by a future colleague, by a peer, not necessarily by management or even human resources. That's just something to keep in mind. Um, so you have your virtual interview. They will set up your time. Uh, right now, like I said, it's it's about three weeks out to get that scheduled. Maybe it'll shorten back up again here soon. Uh, but during the virtual interview, they will first of all read you some information that's basically instructions and kind of formalities about what's about to happen. Then they will ask you some interview questions. They're gonna wanna know why you wanna work for Delta. They're gonna wanna know why you wanna be a flight attendant or why not, now is the right time to be a flight attendant, right? Those kinds of things. They will be asking you some star format questions. So how do we know it's a star format question? It's because they say, tell me about a time when, or they say, have you ever experienced a situation where this happened? Tell me about that. Okay, when they're asking you to tell them a story, that is a star format question where using star format as a guide will be helpful to you. Why do you want to be a Delta flight attendant, not star format? Again, there's um, there's a ton of training in the Flight Attendant Career Connection Interview Workbook Bundle about these different types of interview questions and how you can navigate them and how you can practice them. There's video training in the bundle as well as workbook for you to work your to work yourself out through the interview practice. Because our goal really is to be prepared, not rehearsed. And those things are very different, but we do want to be prepared. Also, something that I've had several people, several clients tell me as far as feedback goes that they were surprised about during the virtual interview is that after they answer their star format question, the interviewer then asks them a follow-up question based on their specific answer. So it sounds like this. Um, I'm going to answer one time I did this and then I did that and this happened. And so I took these action steps. And as a result, we were all happy. And then the question comes in and it's like, oh, wow. Why did you think that that was the best course of action? Or tell me a little bit more about your action steps to make sure that your teammates were on board. So it's a follow up question 
asking almost it feels like for clarification, but this seems to be just the way that they're doing the interview. So this is actually really smart on the on the recruiter side on Delta's part, because you can't prepare as well for these questions. So, you know, we can pray we can prepare for uh, tell me about a time you went above and beyond for a customer and you did something outside of your normal scope of responsibilities. We can prepare for that. But what's the follow up going to be? I don't know. So in some ways, um, it's really smart on their part, because if you're telling a real authentic story, which you should be, if you're really telling the truth in your star format and you really happen to you and you're not making it up, then whatever follow up they ask you should be pretty easy for you. Like, why did you think that was the best course of action? Well, you know why. I mean, you were there. You did it. So uh, it's kind of a smart way to make sure that you're operating in integrity and being honest, which is their core values. Okay. So be prepared for that. Don't let that throw you off. They're not questioning you or nitpicking you. This is just how they're interviewing. And then they'll probably ask you a question that is about, um, what would you do if you were a flight attendant and this or that happened? Cell phone on, laptop out, seat back up, you know, smoking a cigarette. Just kidding. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think anyone asked cigarette. Like, what would you do if someone was smoking a cigarette? I was trying to think of something like ridiculous um, to kind of like throw in there. But anyway, so be ready for that. Remember safety. Remember safety is the number one responsibility. But what they're really testing besides your ability to say no to someone is your ability to say no or give feedback or persuade someone into doing what you want with kindness and hospitality. Okay, so keep those in mind. Then at the end, they read you another little blurb. And then they say, do you have any questions for me specifically pertaining to the interview process or something like that? What the reason I'm pointing this out is there is no room for you to ask the recruiter a question. So you don't need to prepare this whole like, so tell me about your favorite thing about working for Delta. Or if you have like a real question, like what's training like, they close it out and we're not able to ask any questions like that. So you don't have to be prepared with a question for this part, which is kind of, which is good. Yay, less preparation. Next, once you're successful there, they do not tell you whether or not you've been successful during the actual interview, but you should hear pretty soon. They've been, um, it's been like a day, one to three days that people are getting their invitation to their face-to-face. -face. So that's how it's going right now. Still pretty quick. In-person event day. This in-person event day, this is the face-to-face -face at Delta Global World Headquarters Center. Almost sounds like the name of a church when they all that. But anyways, um, it's in Atlanta. They do provide transportation to, uh, they will fly you out there from inside the United States. Uh, they will provide transportation and it hasn't really changed. The process for the face-to-face -face hasn't really changed in a while, like in a long time. So if you've done it before in the last couple of years, it's going to feel familiar, but basically the day consists of it's, it's an entire chunk of time where you are being interviewed, but there's different, there's different sections to the interview. So one is a traditional face-to-face, -face. you and a recruiter sitting down, answering questions. There also is lots of time for you to mix and mingle. There will be probably 45 employees, flight attendants in uniform in the lounge, and your goal is to interact with and mix and mingle, this is their term, mix and mingle with as many of them as possible. So what does that mean? Does that mean that I've got like my checklist scorecard and it's like a freaking bingo scavenger hunt and I've got to like check it all off? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Do not be weird. Do not be weird. What this means is you want to same advice I've been giving y'all for a long time. You want to be in a conversation the entire time. So if you find yourself not in a conversation, you can walk up and join a conversation um, there tends to be some energy from some people where they're a little bit like, so why do you want to work for Delta? Okay. That sounds great. Thanks so much for talking to me. I'm going to go talk to someone else now. And they're like running off and running off and running off. Like that is not a way that doesn't feel good. Right. I mean, that doesn't feel good. That doesn't feel like you really are a friendly, warm, uh, welcoming, approachable, a future Delta flight attendant. So don't go in there with the energy of, I've got to talk to everyone or I'm going to fail. 
No, you want to try to talk with everyone because you want to try to experience as many people as possible. Talk to the candidates that, they're, that are there. Talk to the flight attendants that are there. Do you have some questions prepared that you would like to ask that are easy for them to answer? You are starting a conversation cocktail party style. So what's your, you know, I would love to hear about your favorite layover in the system. Where's your favorite place that you visited? What's your favorite pl thing about working for Delta? Um, why do you love being a flight attendant? What's, what's a piece of advice that you like to give new flight attendants? Things like this, e, you know, you don't have to have a ton of questions. You don't have to ask everyone a different question. It's a cocktail party. What do you do at a cocktail party? So how do you know so-and-so? Where do you work? Do you live here in the city or do you live out in the country? You can ask everyone similar questions. It's not weird to ask people similar questions. So um, keep that in mind. That's the mix and mingle. You will be observed during the entire interview process observed squared because I feel like you're observed in all interviews, but for this one, it's like next level observation where they're really, really, really like um, taking notes and like they're really noticing you as you interact in the mix and mingle. So they're not just noticing you like, oh, I noticed her. Let me take a note of that. That was neat. They're really like, okay, what's she doing? Okay. What is he doing? So that's just something to be aware of um, how you sit how you walk, how you stand, uh, how you use your hands, whoever's the loudest in the room. These are the things that they're noticing, okay? Um, so what did we go over? The face-to-face, -face, mix and mingle. Um, there also will be a group activity. Um, you and your your cohorts, not cohorts, because it's not Southwest, but you and your fellow candidates will be working together to complete a task, maybe set up a cart, maybe, maybe set up a cart, maybe follow some instructions to set up a cart and use some supplies there. Um, you know, I would, I would just think maybe that's pretty common. So maybe that would be what it is. And then there's also um, some opportunity for you to speak in front of the group. Um, and then also for you to do your reach test and your jump seat test as well. They do give out job offers day of. Um, this time around, recently, I've not heard of anyone getting a CJO, a conditional job offer, through email. I have not heard of anyone having that happen this time around. What they used to do is they used to give out, Delta would give out like a handful of CJOs at the face-to-face, -face, and then the majority of people who got a CJO would get it in an email later. I'm not seeing that happen this time. I'm seeing a lot of people getting their CJOs at the face-to-face, -face, and I haven't heard of anyone, which if you know of someone within the last, well, in 2022 that has gotten a CGO in an email, I would love for you to pop it in the comments because maybe it has happened. I'm just saying I haven't experienced it that, that way uh, based on feedback that I've gotten from people I've talked to. So, um, so that's, yeah, so that's kind of, so you can expect to get your job offer day of is kind of where I'm going. They're giving out a lot of job offers at the interview. So hopefully you'll leave that day with your job offer and then you'll be on your way to training. Um, I'm not going to do talk a lot about training in this video because this video is about the application process. And technically, yes, training is an extension of the interview process. But for our purposes here today, I'm not going to talk about training, um, although it is eight and a half weeks long and it's in Atlanta. <laughs> But there's lots of information on the website. So again, that uh, page that I was linked to, I mean, that I was showing you, I'll link it in the comments and, or in the description. And you may have noticed it said like two of six. It's actually like a six page slideshow and they all the little parts open up. So there is a ton of information, like a ton of information on there about the company, frequently asked questions about the mission. Like there is everything you need to know about Delta. You do not have to go Googling around. We don't have to go hitting the Googles. It is all in this little packet that Delta made for us. It's like beautiful. So please utilize it. Um, okay, that's it. That's a wrap. That is the current 2022 Delta Airlines flight attendant interview process. Um, I would love to connect with you in the Facebook group. If you want help getting ready for one of your upcoming interviews, my information for how to book coaching, how to purchase the Flight Attendant Career Connection interview workbook, all that good stuff is down in 
the description along with the other links. I can't wait to talk to you again. And I can't wait to see where your wings take you. Talk to you later.